We played a game with uh, Chris Anthony and Tracy at PAX. That is a good review because it was a. It's not a legacy game like write stuff on the board and then like it changes the story. Nope. It's a game that you can play once because you destroy it physically in the course of playing yes, it. Yes, it is a one-time use disposable board game. You buy it. How much does it cost? 15, 20 bucks? Yeah, not much. You open it. You play it with your friends. It takes about an hour and then it's done, which actually you might think, oh, what a waste of money that is. It's like, hey, asshole, you probably spent $15 just for one movie ticket for one person. Down here. For about the same amount of time. And this is here, giving you four friends or five friends or more. How many players is it? Uh, uh Many? Yeah. One to six. Yeah, up to six people can have an hour of fun with the one box. So it's only game on the disposable part, right? Um, Right here, I have an ogre box that I have played 0.5 times. I'll pay... The amount of money it costs for one person to go to sit in one seat in one hockey game, you could buy this game. <laughs> How many times could you buy this game? So this game... So there's nothing wrong with the disposable factor of this game. Yep. I The, the fun per dollar was well within reason. Right. We played Exit the Game, Secret Lab. And it's important to say the whole title because there's an entire series of Exit games, including such titles as The Polar Station, The Pharaoh's Tomb, the Forbidden Castle, The Forgotten Island, and The Abandoned Cave. So what the deal the is... something to something. Right. So what the deal with this is it's basically an escape room in a box, right? It's made of paper and bits, but it's an escape room. Yep. And it's the... the, the in fact, the, it is, I would say it is functionally indistinguishable from a real, physical, high-money escape room. I... For every escape room that I have seen, I agree. Right. So I now to the full disclosure, I have done because Emily's company, the previous one, we did like an outing where we all went to uh, one of those like fancy escape rooms in Manhattan. Mm -hmm. and it was real good. Like the production value was way higher than you would expect. Like, but not high enough for Scott. Eh, How would, much did it cost? I don't I Nothing because I just went to it. Like, uh oh, OK. <laughs> but I bet uh, it cost more than $15 for six people. Uh, Yeah, definitely. Definitely. But the only benefit, the only difference between the physical big money escape room and this is that some of the puzzles involved crazy complicated physical shit like there's a bust in a room and if you move it somewhere else a door opens like it's pick it up si it's a silver monkey yeah yeah but it's all triggered with like switches and stuff it's not like it's actually like built to work for real sure this basically only has paper and cardboard yeah there's a there's a card mechanism where you can tell if you've solved the riddle or not, and then it will take you, you open up the next thing, and now you're in the next room, and you get more stuff, so you can solve more riddles to get more stuff to solve yep. more riddles, and eventually you solve the final riddle, and it's like, congratulations, and you read the end of the story. So this instance, Exit the Game, The Secret Lab, won the 2017 Kenner's Field is Yar. Which is the kid's field is Yar, which makes perfect sense. Cause I thought Kenner, I thought, wasn't that the Kinder's Field? The Kenner is like the puzzle one, I thought. I don't know. I don't Figure it out. It's it's not the regular Spiel des Jahres, but it's still great enough to be worthy of winning an award, right? So here's the thing. I'm really not a fan, personally, of escape rooms. It's just like, I don't like them. And the number one reason I don't like them is because I feel like... Yeah, Scott, Counterspiel is the connoisseur slash expert game. This is not a connoisseur expert game. Well, it's niche, though. It is. This is, you know, you talk about gaming and how there's like... Niche market, core market, extent like all those different markets. Mm -hmm. This is definitely at best. You could probably sell these extended market, but this is definitely like aimed at niche slash core. Yes, but anyway, the thing I don't like about escape rooms is I think that they're basically it's a misnomer, right? It's like when I think of an escape room, if I'm going to go to a physical place, you think of saw. All right, <laughs> you I think want of saw, like if I'm going to if kill I'm going to pay to go to an escape room. I'm thinking not this kind of random puzzle numerology bullshit. It's like, I want some Houdini shit, right? Tie oh. me the fuck up with chains and locks. It's like, good luck, motherfucker. We're closing the safe on you, right? Yep. That's an escape you room. You want to, like, break a window, and now you're in basically right. American Ninja Warrior, yeah. and I've, you've got to, like, I've, escape. I've had this idea. It's similar to my feelings on haunted houses, right? It's like, you go to a haunted house, and you know that it's some guy jumping out going, boo, and it's like, whatever. So what, you want a haunted house where a guy comes out and actually cuts you a little? Like, eh. That would be okay. Yeah. But what I really want is a haunted house. You go in the haunted house, and then 
they're like they turn all the lights on and the fire alarm goes off and they're like and the guy takes off his ghost sheet and he's like oh sorry guys i guess we got to evacuate oh and then three years and later you, and you're you, still in the game you go you're like home with the, your the, wife you open the emergency exit the emergency exit opens up you go out down some stairs you're obviously behind the scenes you know you're you're actually you know you're you feel like you're you're not in the haunted house anymore but you are. So and Scott, it's there, actually scary. Did you ever see the movie The Game? No. Is that what that is? That's what that is. It's That's actually all, a pretty good movie. How come I can't go to The Game in real life? Uh, there are places to do that in New York, actually. But I would know that is that kind of place when I'm going there. Well, that's the plot of this movie, The Game, which <laughs> I remember liking as a kid because I was in like high school. <laughs> I do not know if it holds up. We have to set up what looks like a perfectly innocent haunted house at a tourist attraction that's not innocent. Well, Scott, so the game was made by the same person who made Seven, so. Ah, good movie, that yeah. Seven. Anyway, so the point is the escape rooms, what they really are, what they should be called is solve stupid number and letter riddles with nah, friends. They're way more specific than that. Escape rooms almost always follow a very specific pattern. There are a number of gates and, to, and the, the gate can be anything. It could be a lock. It could be a... It doesn't matter. It's a gate. Mm -hmm. And the gates require between one and five alphanumeric inputs. Mm -hmm. So you, the puzzle is... The puzzle all... Like every puzzle all bakes down to what combination of things that I have access to can I convert somehow into the correct number of inputs of the correct type? It's really like open these five combination locks, but we're not going to just give you the numbers. We're going to give you the numbers heavily, heavily obfuscated. So I tend to them solve out. them by looking for, all right, we need five inputs in this puzzle. Is there five of anything anywhere? Yep. Well, there's five balls on the ground, so let's see if there's a way to translate balls into numbers. Right, so... It oh, is. But, but there's one other mechanic. The other thing that these all have in common is you'll have, at almost every moment, multiple gates, some of which can be solved with the data you already have, and some of which can be solved either with the data you already have coupled with external knowledge or the data you already have coupled with data you get when you get through further locks. Right. They're also, so they're parallel they don't so give people you, can split up right. the puzzles. They also give you data in advance that you don't need yet because the gate is not available yet and they'll give you gates you don't have the data for yet and so yep. on and so forth. So now you have to figure out not only how to you know com use the information to create the codes you need but also which information is relevant to which thing. Yep. So but what they also do not do is they never they don't have fatal consequences like well you fucked it up uh they don't it's have just time it's like how fast can you get out or do you get out in time yep that's it they don't have triggers like oh you didn't defuse the bomb right now the bomb's gonna go off sooner or no. like one of your teammates is out of the game or anything like that that would be better i think but no they don't so no that'd be awesome you like open the wrong that's what door I said. it would be better if they did that yeah yeah it'd be better than what escape rooms are right if, if they had bombs that go off it's like oh sorry you paid for this escape room but uh you didn't solve the bomb and it blew up everyone out but basically other than the, done. the physical you don't get to see the rest of the escape room pay and try again other than the physical aesthetic of being in an actual physical room exit the game is basically identical to the experience of an actual escape room. Mm -hmm. So while it is fun to solve riddles, I guess if you like solving, you know, yep. cryptogram type, you know, things, it's fun to an extent. You know, you can get tired of it after a while, but it's okay. It's more fun to do it with friends because they can help each other out. Yep. And, you know, especially if no, you know, if you have a person who's smart enough, they can just figure the whole thing out by themselves. But it's more fun to sort of collaborate because and also because there's multiple things to work on simultaneously. You know, it's like you can get through more efficiently with yep. more people. Well, like me and, and Tracy were like puzzling over those flags while you guys were working on a puzzle I didn't even really interact with. Yeah, but then the stuff comes together and you put your pieces together, right? It's like, yep. it's fun to solve riddles with friends. And this will give you about an hour of fun riddle solving with friends, which is perfectly fine. But I'm still not really into escape rooms. It's like I wouldn't go out and like obsessively go get the whole set of these. But if I someone pay brought to go one to of these are a great convention game. And oh, I yeah, feel great like, convention yeah, game. If anyone brings one of these I haven't played to a convention I'm at, I'll probably just play it. It's the kind of thing where I'd be in the mood to do it once in a while, right? Yeah. Like, uh, like, if you brought one out of these, like, hey, Scott, let's do one now, I'd be like, no. Right, if, you, if you even brought one on the weekend with a bunch of people, I'd be like, no, I just did that. I'm not feeling that stupid thing again. 
But, but like, Pat like, next year? If Pat Wax next year, you got another one, and it, like, if it's the Pharaoh's Tomb one, I'd probably do it. Yeah. But if it's what were the other lame ones? I don't know. The, the polar, polar one? one? Yeah, I'd be like, yeah, I don't want to do the polar one. I don't know. You read, did you read the terror, right? I could do some polar nonsense. I didn't read the terror, but I don't care. I'm gonna, I might make that the next book club book, even though I've read it before. Cause that That's book, cheating. Oh, you want to do that? All right, Once the Future King. Here we go. I've read it. Have you read it? Uh, yeah, I'll read it again. I love uh, that book. I'll have to find a book I've read that you haven't read. Uh, careful, son, because Count, <laughs> Count of Monte Cristo is the sword of Dam. No, it's the book of Damocles <laughs> hanging over you, because if it fell on you, it would kill you just the same as a sword. I just wouldn't read it. What are you going to do about it? You can't make me. <laughs> You can't make me. You know, you're going to ruin the book club? The I'll, social contract. I'll get the cliff note. What you going to do about it? Kind of. You know what? I'll watch a movie. What you going to do about it? The you movies are all... The, the movies I bet of I can that book. I bet I can fool you. Uh, I don't think you, think you could. I, read it. The cli- I the- watched the anime. <laughs> I've also watched the anime. Uh-huh. I would know specifically if you only watched the anime because certain <laughs> things... <laughs> I uh, forget anime, most of the anime. The anime is great, actually. like I think the anime Count of Monte Cristo is more in the spirit of the book, despite taking gratuitous liberties, <laughs> than any other adaptation of The Count of Monte Cristo anyone has ever made. But the end to the anime is bullshit. It is a terrible ending. Mm-hmm. Like, it is so bad and so poorly done that it kind of ruined... Like, that is an A-B minus plus anime if you don't watch the last episode. Mm-hmm. If you watch the last episode, it's like B... Maybe a B, probably just a B. Maybe anyway. a B minus. Anyway, so exit game thingy. If you got enough friends who like solving number letter visual kind of puzzles, yep. right? The kind of friends who would be excited if you told them you had tickets to an escape room. Uh, and if you don't mind spending fifteen dollars for an hour of fun with five or six friends that you can only do one time, then. Buy one of these things and go for it. And yeah. maybe if your friends are the kind who are way into it, you could buy a whole set of these things and go nuts. Uh, otherwise, you know, maybe let someone else, like I did, spend the money and just tag along and play for free, which is <laughs> totally worth doing it at least one time. Uh, you know, hey. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's pretty, uh, It's even if you don't like doing the thing, the thing I think I enjoyed the most about it actually was not the solving of the puzzles because like I can get that just like solving puzzles in a puzzle book from the drugstore. Yeah. It was seeing how they put this thing together. Like, whoa. Oh, yeah. The the double index lookup. Right. The double deck. index with the cards and the paper you tear apart. Like how it was physically constructed was very clever. And like it's like, oh, the people who made this, I see what they did there. That is cool. Yeah. How they do that. There was like a, a pe- there was like a little clock and a compass we made and stuff. Yeah, the only the only red herring we ran into was for a minute we were all like, "Is this Star Tropics? Do we need to make this wet?" So we spit yeah, on I was, something. Yeah, I, I, I licked my finger and then rubbed my spit on the paper because we didn't have any water available and I didn't want to make the whole paper soggy. Scott, there was water twelve feet away from. I didn't want to make the. I didn't want to like soggy the whole paper and like destroy it. Right. What is a tiny bit of water on? But it? I thought, hey, maybe if I breathe on it, like. Ink will, magic ink will appear. Yep. They, they should have done that. Missed opportunity. The physicality of it. And for $15, it, they should be doing that Yeah, kind like of we stuff. had to tear some stuff apart. And we're like, oh, we don't, I don't think we need to tear this. No, we needed to tear it apart. Like yep. the physicality of it was pretty good. Mm-hmm. Uh, the only problem with these games is that the puzzle, like the logic of the puzzle a couple of times barely made sense. Well, I mean, the fiction of these things never makes sense. It's like, oh, I locked you in my lab and made you solve puzzles before you could know, escape. Like, well, the fiction of this one it's was... Like if I, you know, it's like the 60s fiction of Batman. This one, I'm the Riddler. Solve my riddles. The fiction of this one was that we're mixing different chemicals together to make compounds. Yeah, that was not... <laughs> that was nonsense. But the problem is that the logic of, like, how did they expect you to solve the puzzle? Like, what was the chain of logic that they expect you to solve it with? We solved some of them not quite that way because you don't need to have a logical chain. You just need to be able to convert the right number of inputs. Yes, and then I, lo- probably- I basically, as I was solving it, I just looked past all the fiction and only looked at the numbers and letters yeah, did the and n- colors. Did, 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 I, did I do a transformation that made five alphanumeric characters come up? That is almost definitely the answer. Yep. And we were never wrong. If we were able to make an output, we were right. The only times we were wrong is when we made an output 
from scratch just by So if you're guessing. looking to be immersed in the fiction, yeah. this is not going to help you. Neither is even the most high production quality escape room. You're going to need the Scott level escape room to be immersed in the fiction. <laughs> That's the only way it's going to happen. This has been Geek Nights with Rim and Scott. Special thanks to DJ Pretzel for the opening music, Kat Lee for web design, and Brando K for the logos. Be sure to visit our website at frontrowcrew.com for show notes, discussion, news, and more. Remember, Geek Nights is not one, but four different shows. SciTech Mondays, Gaming Tuesdays, Anime Comic Wednesdays, and Indiscriminate Thursdays. Geek Nights is distributed under a Creative Commons Attribution 3.0 license. Geek Nights is recorded live with no studio and no audience. But unlike those other late shows, it's actually recorded at night. <laughs> <laughs>